Welcome to Art Discourse. It is a show where Kyle and I answer a random question selected from our little question box here uh, that's related to art and asked by you, the audience. All right, Kyle, what's the news question? How do installation artists make money from their art? Mm, I like this one specific. <laughs> it's me again. Okay, installation arts, great question. I think that there is the like um, granting avenue mm -hmm. where an installation artist will apply for a grant to do a site specific artwork somewhere. And I think that there is like private institutions that also do essentially the same thing. Yeah, I think an installation artist has like, usually like either they're gonna work with an institution to install yep. their work or they're gonna work with the public to install their work. Or sometimes, um, you know, maybe you're working with, uh, uh, what is the word that I'm looking for? Like how the Louis Vuitton store has an installation work um, of uh, Terrell, that Terrell piece. James Terrell. Yeah, hopefully that's his name. It's a beautiful piece, oh my gosh, highly recommend. It's in Vegas, Vegas, okay. The installation, great. But, you know, so it kind of depends. I mean, obviously like that's a, a, a level. Yeah, maybe a commercial partnership, yeah. I think. Okay. When you're first starting as an installation artist, I would say if you're working in installation and you're still at school in your undergrad or even in a graduate program, I would highly recommend getting an installation up in the in the school somewhere. Maybe if the um, school has a like a student run gallery exhibiting it there um, and taking really good photographs of, of whatever it is you install at that time. Even like hiring someone to take photographs would be um, something I would suggest because that's going to be a great line item on your CV and like a, a, a pretty no brainer place to begin the journey of installation work. With installation artwork, if you're exhibiting it, at least here in Canada, you get an exhibition fee. Yeah, well, I mean, depending on your, the, the space that you exhibit. So, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Galleries have um, exhibition fees, and so if you are exhibiting it, the gallery will pay you X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of like the bread and butter of uh, at least an academic installation artist working in like a, like a public art gallery. Yeah, so if, you are, if you're are you working and you want to be exhibiting in a gallery space, um, at least in Ontario, the best places to look would be artist-run centers or public museums. So like within our area, there's spaces like Modern Fuel is an excellent artist-run center. Art space in Peterborough is great. Um, there is, in Toronto, there's tons of different spaces. Um, the Agnes Etherington is a public museum that uh, focuses on um, contemporary work, often installation based. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you're applying to those types of environments, then they'll have artist fees um, because we in Canada have kind of a union called CARFAC and it sort of stipulates the amount of money that somebody should, as an artist, receive for either the space, so if it's a, a certain size or a certain scale of institution, um, or if there's just a solo show or a group show, the, the fees range sort of based on a few different parameters, um, but usually if you're exhibiting in a space like that, there will be a fee associated because they're being publicly funded and you're gonna be um, paid to exhibit in a publicly funded space. So that's a great place to start as, a, yeah. as an installation artist. And then public spaces. I mean, that's something we do a lot. I guess they're like not necessarily permanent installations either in that regard. No. More than more like an event or something along those lines. And like, sometimes those are paid by the public, such as if we're like, you can think about it like if you're putting on like a concert, you have ticket sales and things like that that can fund it in that direction. I think our last public, the last public art project we did was... It was the Lantern Festival. Yeah, 2019? Yeah. Wow. 
pre-pandemic 2019 and that was like a large installation that was for an event that also had other things going on at the time but that would have been up for like ooh, a day and a half yeah a lot of time <laughs> installation work in that sense like a public or community installation yeah it's a really short-lived it's a lot of work for a very short amount of time yeah it because the installation artwork tends to be experiential right yeah so not necessarily something that's like permanent and is fixed in a space for all time yeah i think that like looking at different organizations that work with um like building community art experiences is a great avenue uh, that's a bit different than working with uh, a gallery or a museum and like Kyle said, they're usually short, but there's, they still usually pay their artists. Those fees can vary greatly depending on the scope of the project, how many people are contributing, that sort of thing. Um, and sometimes there's going to be additional um, sort of stipulations within that. Like maybe you have to host a community event or you have to be present on site for a certain number of hours. So, you know, make sure that you can actually commit to whatever is being requested of you. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of the ones we do, we have to physically be there, um, sometimes guiding people through an activity or that sort of thing. Usually an activity. Yeah, so these are like working with organizations that are applying to like a larger sum of money that are kind of dishing it out to a bunch of different people to participate and create stuff. Another avenue of which like installation artists will like make their money, which is through project creation grants. And those like in, at least in the Ontario Arts Council, like you can apply for funding for a creation project. Yeah. And so like you could be doing that to create a work that goes somewhere. You could also look at residencies. There's different residencies that are gonna facilitate um, different types of exhibition um, projects. And so there might be a residency out there that's specifically looking to work with installation artists because part of their mandate is to um, expose their community to what installation art looks like, or maybe they have a space that's specifically dedicated to people working in installation. So in that situation, you might have a place to stay, a place to make, a stipend or something like that, and then also a place to exhibit, which could be a really unique experience for an installation artist. So when your installation is done and gone, like trying to like capitalize on that thing afterwards. I think that like, yeah, like if you're thinking about like land art, you know, if you look at rivers and tides, Andy Goldsworth, the, there you go. I would say that his art is installation based or like uh, Jean-Claude and Cousteau, their work is installation based. Yep. And usually the like life of that project lives on through video and, and photograph. And you know, as you grow your career, then galleries and museums might be taking the ephemera of that experience to be the exhibition. Well, that's very, very true. Mm -hmm. So like trying to like extend your site-specific installation past that yeah. and do videography or documentation, like two-dimensional documentation. Mm -hmm. I think also like you can travel an exhibition around that's an installation as long as you're storing everything really well. So you could pitch your installation to more than one space and then pick it up from one space and move it to another. We we did a show called Put a Bird on It. I know. Um, we'll give you a moment to roll your eyes. Okay, great. And uh, it was a collection of what, like 400 some 4 500 odd birds. birds. We did this with Jenny Suddick for Critical Mass in Port Hope. And then the Gladstone asked us to reinstall it as part of the Grow Up show. They invited us to reinstall that. Oh, yeah. bird on an exhibition. It's very true. And so that exhibition had another life, which we then got paid for that one. So. Yeah. And I mean, that show and Come Up to My Room, which the Glad Gladstone does, are other examples of great places to do installation work, actually. Yeah. Um, another like kind of like avenue is to follow the like, kind of festival circuit that mm -hmm. installation artwork seems to have with like, um, you know, like Louis Blanche, like the Illuminati. Nope. Nope. <laughs> what was the other one? I know what you're talking about, but I can't think. It's not of. the Illuminati. No, it's definitely not the Illuminati. <laughs> Although this would be a great time for us to put in the Illuminati. So <laughs> Anyways, that one. <laughs> uh, like following those kinds of things, like there is funding that follows those programs, and like by trying to like match projects to those, like that's a way to like sustain your pro well your career as an installation artist. Yeah. So yeah, let us know. Do you are you an installation artist? Where have you shown your work? What's an interesting environment that you've got to show your work in that maybe was unexpected or you came about it in an interesting way. Let us know in the comments below. Bye everybody. Until next time. If you enjoyed this video, could you do two things for me? Could you like it and could you subscribe to our channel? Both of these things help us out tremendously. 
A big shout out to all of our patrons. Your continued support is amazing, and we really appreciate the encouragement to continue making these videos. If you want to become a patron, you can see the link below in the description.